I'm Mohammed Imran Osman. I'm the IT audit manager for Clicks Group and also the Isaka South Africa regional coordinator. So about a week ago, you know, there were two decisions we had to decide. Um, one is to go ahead with our events and the other one was to cancel our events um, given the recent COVID-19 pandemic across the globe. And we as a chapter decided, let's actually use this opportunity to go ahead with our strategic objectives in hosting Isaka's South Africa's first webinar. So thank you all for joining. Uh, and we are very excited at this opportunity. Um, and our technology for our topic for today is technology disruption in the retail industry. And given the recent challenges that we all are currently facing, um, technology is going to be a fundamental game changer in terms of how we conduct not only our work, but also in our daily lives. So for today's discussion, um, I'm going to be talking through a few key points um, on retail journey, um, just some statistics in terms of uh, retail and technology uses, and then just give an overview of the evolution of technology over the last few decades and how that has actually impacted retail and what does the future of retail actually look like. So we're going to start with the retail journey. So some or most of us will actually, if we go back in time, you know, in the mid 1960s, 1970s, you know, retail started off in pretty much a marketplace where customers like myself and you, we went through town, we went through corner shops and, you know, we bought goods or specific goods at different corner shops or different shops in the different um, locations. Fast forward a few decades and we come through to the 1990s where we see supermarkets being introduced into the retail industry where we could have customers given the opportunity to buy various products in a single supermarket or location. A few decades after that into the late 1990s and early 2000s, we see the introduction of malls where we have multiple retailers starting to be established in retail malls that offers consumers the opportunity to go into a single location and actually go and purchase a variety of products suited to their requirements. In where we find ourselves now is that we have introduction of newer technologies such as mobile applications. Um, we also find ourselves where consumers are actually and consumer behavior is actually changing at an exponential rate. What does the future what does the future actually look like? So the future is basically coupled with multiple uses of various technologies which we're going to discuss in more detail as the presentation progresses, but it's going to offer the customer like myself and you integrated technologies both in my online presence and in my physical store. And we're going to chat through about that in more detail over the next few slides. But before we go through that, let's just go through some of the statistics. So currently we have four and a half billion internet users across the globe, okay? Social media users, we have 3.8 million. We have 60% of our online users that are <clears throat> shopping on retail. Currently we have 5.2 billion mobile phones. Okay, the average time spent on the internet by our internet users is six and a half hours per day. Um, if you can guess what the survey South Africa fits into this whole picture, so currently South Africa, on average, we spend 9.2 hours a day on the internet. Okay, we are ranked second globally. Okay, and given the recent um, lockdown notification from the president, we are possibly likely to 
be ranked number one over the next few days. Fingers crossed. 70% of the global population actually purchase online every month. In South Africa, 56% of our internet users are shopping online. Average spend per year by e-commerce users is $500 internationally. In South Africa, we have average spend of 2,000 rand a year. Okay. <clears throat> what does this mean in terms of our business and how we actually do, our, our do retail? So retail essentially is about buying and selling. We're retailers, buy a product, and we're reselling that to, a cost, uh, into, to customers. Okay. Given the recent customer behavior, customers' demands are always changing. Customers are demanding more products and more efficiently. And in order to satisfy our customer needs, retailers need a stronger portfolio of technology, technological tools to attract and retain consumers. We are seeing a number of new loyalty, loyalty partnerships being uh, introduced amongst many of the retailers, such as Clicks Club Card, which we are currently um, the number one loyalty partner for. Um, we have Pick and Pay Smart Shopper, Checkers Extra Savings, and we have Egdas, um, Woolworths, and the more common one on the banking industry is obviously FNB eBucks. Okay, what is the customer actually looking for? And how do we, as organizations, actually respond to that? So we need to actually start to analyze customer behavior using the different points of data and transactions that they are actually giving us. As organizations, we need to constantly map the customer journey to create frictionless customer experience, both in our online store and physical stores. We need to invest and engage into deeper customer research to actually understand what are our customers actually buying, how often are they actually buying it, and when are they buying it, in order for us as organizations or retailers to actually prioritize what my customer needs are. This is underlying by introducing and establishing both innovation and digital strategic objectives and teams within our organization. Businesses are starting to integrate into the both physical and digital worlds through emerging technologies. And because of this, we have entirely new business models that are being created, such as introduction of robotic process, robotic process autom automation for repetitive tasks that employees perform on a daily basis. Think as think examples include accounts payables, my IT service desk, and also data analytics. Business models are no longer about increasing my revenue and reducing costs. They are, strategies are being redesigned that is underlined by newer technologies where consumer behaviors, preferences, and habits are continuously changing. Retailers are also establishing multi-ecosystems. So think of clicks in the retail sector. What are we actually going to do in terms of enhancing customer experiences? Think of Uber. Uber is an ecosystem where we have a single platform that's connecting my local business driver into us as a consumer to get to a specified location. If we turn our attention to the healthcare industry, an ecosystem can, an example of an ecosystem could be the ability to go to a doctor, automatically have a script sent through to a pharmacy and have that pharmacy medication delivered to your home. So if I go to a doctor, by the time I get home, my medication has already been delivered to my home. So in terms of the evolution of the different technologies in retail, what are they? So if we fast forward back a few years, most of us will remember the first cash register where we have somebody cashing up, punching in a few buttons, giving us a physical receipt, okay? Then we see, started seeing electronic point of sale systems 
we started seeing introduction of scanners where people are no longer typing in barcodes or typing in prices. We are seeing uh, products that are being scanned, prices are automatically calculated and run up on the points of sale screens. And at the same time, we started seeing ERP systems being implemented in head office systems. In the early 2000s, we saw the birth of e-commerce or online shopping, exciting times. E-commerce has increased average on 30% over the last 10 years. Where we see ourselves now is retailers are starting to introduce mobile applications. In the future, merges both my physical and my digital worlds, creating customer data for both organizations and our customers to understand our customer behavior, our customer patterns in more detail so that we as retailers can deliver fast and efficient products at the right price. So what are some of the technologies currently being explored by the different retailers? Okay, we have artificial intelligence, blockchain, internet of things, robotics, and machine learning. And we're going to explore some of the applications of that in some of other retail, retail organizations that are currently using some of the technologies. So let's start with artificial intelligence or the fourth industrial revolution as it's commonly known. Okay, so a few examples include H&M who currently use artificial intelligence to analyze store returns, receipts, and their loyalty cards to predict future demand for apparel and accessories and to effectively manage the inventory. eBay uses AI powered technology to facilitate their pricing and inventory algorithms to the most appropriate prices for goods and to notify the sellers. Couple that with machine learning and analytics, it helps them stay flexible and change prices and promotions instantly based on the customer insights. Kroger replaced their paper price tag with instantly changing digital tags. They've coupled that with smart shelf technology, which we will touch to a bit later, and display additional information about specific products in their store, such as nutritional information, current promotions, and video adverts. Morris, Morrison's International actually completely automated their replenishment for the inventory using artificial intelligence that helped them reduce shelf, shelf gaps by up to 30%. And obviously the most common example as we all are pretty much aware of is the Amazon Go, where they have enabled checkout free stores the Amazon Go app, along with the just walk out shopping technology in their store, automatically allows customers to take products from their store, walk out, and actually charge the customer on their virtual card or account. Once the customer is completed their shopping, they receive an automatically electronic receipt and they will be charged on their Amazon account. What does this mean for us as retailers? We have cost savings, increased productivity, increased revenue because we have better customer insight that can lead to better decision making and faster delivery of new products and services. Blockchain. What makes blockchain so unique? The fact that it is inherently a secure platform and has complete auditability in its technology. Retail, retailers for blockchain, as we mentioned earlier, there are a number of new loyalty or affinity partners that retailers are adopting within their loyalty programs. Using blockchain technology allows the different loyalty partners to actually have 
irreversible transactions that are transparent, all transactions that are time-stamped. More commonly, obviously used in the financial services industry, currently in South Africa, in terms of our banking industry. But in the retail sector, Burger King has launched a cryptocurrency in Russia called the Whopper coin to facilitate their customer re rewards program. You can have Whopper tokens that can be stored online, traded, or even transferred to other people. Walmart have currently partnered with IBM to create a blockchain for tracking food globally through its supply chain. Real-time data is captured at every single transactional point on every single food product. Some of the other examples include Nestle, Dole Food, and Unilever, who are collaborating with IBM as well to, for the use of blockchain since 2016. Why? To improve the customer's or company's ability to identify issues involved with food recalls, such as tracing outbreaks more quickly to limit customer and reputational damage to the organization. Huawei uses blockchain technology to organize the mobile industry further to reduce fraud. It allows mobile carriers opportunities to support and transform business models through implementation of multiple network layers that can transform how data integrity is verified and value and rights are transmitted and tracked over the for subscribers. Internet of Things, one of the more newer developed technologies. So most of us are familiar with the concept of smart. You know, we are living in the smart age where we have smart TVs, we have smart wearables, we have smartphones. And Gartner predicts that there will be an estimate of over 26 billion connected devices by the end of this year. We are currently sitting just under 25 billion as per the latest statistics. What does this mean for the retail industry? And how can the Internet of Things technology actually offer benefit to the retail? So we've seen a lot of retailers moving towards smart shelves and smart trolleys. Smart trolleys allow, similar to the Amazon Go concept, have added cameras that are built into the trolley carts and actually scan the product to tell the organization or retailer what you've actually placed in them. Customers pay by entering their credit card or using their online mobile app. When a customer exits the store, a green light appears on the shopping trolley, indicates that the customer has completed and the order is complete and they are subsequently charged. Smart shelves allows stores to keep track of their items on a real-time basis to make sure that they are never out of stock. My shelves are always replenished, increasing my revenue. Coupled with also RFID tags and readers to scan products both on display and stock shelves. In retail, shrinkage is a common concept that <clears throat> is always reducing in my cost or inventory losses. <coughs> Excuse me. Smart shelves will actually assist us in retailers to reduce shrinkage and minimize my cost where inventory losses are concerned. Machine learning, so as we all are aware, machine learning is predominantly based on using and analyzing huge amounts of data. Okay. The greatest value of machine learning is its predictive nature that allows companies and organizations to use past and present customer and operational information to predict future behavior and trends. Amazon use machine learning coupled with data analytics for personalization and predicting supply chain and demand. Their algorithms worked so well that over 50% of their sales are driven by these various machine learning algorithms and recommendations. 
Walmart uses facial recognition software with the ability to recognize different levels of frustration by customers in their stores and trigger alerts to store management for assistance to the different customers. Not so much in the retail industry, but machine learning has impacted Netflix, which probably most of us actually use for downloading and streaming. They currently use machine learning and big data to understand how their customers consume television and film content and deliver the content that users actually want. The concept of smart downloads. It also influenced the strategic decisions such as the way in which they release their digital productions on the streaming platform. So let's talk about robotics. So many of us think of robotics as a humanoid or a robot, physical robot that humans are or have, can interact with, okay? But there are various forms of robotics. One of the more common ones currently used in organization is RPA or robotic process automation, as we mentioned earlier. A lot of organizations have started to adopt this for repetitive tasks, such as in their financial month ends, in their IT service desks, and accounts payables. Some of the actual robots, robots that are actually used in retail, Walmart have introduced shelf scanning robots in their distribution centers and in their stores for, for improved inventory management and stock takes. Drones, drones are used for improving my delivery and faster delivery to my customers. They also, outside of the retail sector can be used to perform other dangerous functions such as searching for survivors in the event of disasters. They can also be used for surveillance and monitoring such as in the manufacturing and in the farming industries. In the medical sector, so there's been new introductions such as robotic exoskeletons which can assist patients in their physical rehabilitation and for paralyzed patients. Healthcare robotics include various systems such as surgical robots used in replacement of traditional surgeons to perform surgery. In the education sector, there's been multiple uses at home or in classrooms, which includes hands-on programmable sets, lesson plans, and even teacher interactive robots. So one of the more exciting concepts in the retail that's going to have one of the more disruptive effects is probably going to be virtual reality. Initially started or introduced in the gaming industry, we've now seen virtual reality or augmented reality in both our online presence and in our physical stores. I'm going to talk to some of the South African examples. So Dulux, CTM, and At Home have introduced mobile applications and launched online, which gives the customers or consumers the ability to have a preview or augmented reality view of either their painting or their, living, or their living room space before actually buying a new paint or at home offers the customer's ability to shop online furniture and other home accessories in their living space. CTM allows you the ability to preview various tiles in terms of the different living spaces before actually ordering online and having it delivered to your door. Imagine going into a hair salon and asking the stylist 
to select different styles of hair that's going to suit you. Augmented reality can actually assist in allowing the customers to choose the best style for your hair. L'Oreal has introduced augmented reality to preview various makeups. Customers can select various different makeups to decide which one actually suits their preference before making a, a purchase, which obviously enhances the customer experience and gives the customer the best value. Nike and Adidas have introduced stores that allows customers to design their own athletic footwear coupled with 3D technology in their stores and actually have it made for them before they leave the store. One of the biggest impacts in augmented reality is in the fashion industry. So as an example, most of us, if we are going to buy new vehicles, we would like to test drive the vehicle before actually going to purchase it. Augmented reality in the fashion retail industry allows customers to try on the clothing in a virtual mirror, selecting various colors and sizes before actually making a purchase. What does the future of retail actually look like? So as I've talked through the various technologies that are currently used in the retail industry, we have the omni-channel experience. In South Africa, we've seen recent launches of various concept stores, such as Checkers, Clicks, Discam, Pick and Pay, Edgars. The customer expectations and behaviors are continuously changing. Customers are looking for more efficient ways to conduct their shopping. Checkers have introduced multiple services within their own store. What does this mean? And how does technology actually influence all of this? So technology, customers are looking for the omni-channel experience where the physical store meets my digital platforms. This allows customers to get both my digital experience that I can experience online as well as in my physical store presence. The malls of the future are no longer be limited to just shopping. Malls of the future are going to be impacted by technology allowing customers to enter a mall, have automated notifications onto their smart devices, notifying them of the various promotions offered by various retailers. The omnichannel experience is defined as such, where we have the multi-technological multi experience that's given to give the customer the best experience that they can experience both physically and digitally. So COVID-19, <clears throat> and I thought it's only fitting to actually talk about COVID-19, the impact that it's had globally, us in our country, and what does that mean for retailers? And how can technology actually assist? So as we all are aware of the concept of panic buying, where retailers saw thousands and thousands, possibly even millions of shoppers flocking to their stores and panic buying, stocking up on groceries. This resulted in retailers having empty store shelves, especially for products such as healthcare, hand sanitizers, the like. How can technology actually assist in giving customers the best possible experience? 
technology, as we all know, is, is allowing us not only as customers, but as fellow workers, ability to work from remote places, allowing customers to shop online. Technology also can assist in making sure that my online stores and my physical stores are always replenished, always have stock available, thereby always mitigating risk of lost sales and giving the customer the best possible value. Ladies and gentlemen, that comes to an end of the presentation and we will now open the pod for any questions and answers. I thank you. So we have some questions and the first question is, what if there is prolonged nationwide lockdown? How can technology assist the country in the retail sector specifically, household and medical supplies? So as I mentioned before, technology has the ability to predict customer behavior in terms of what are my customers actually purchasing, okay, given the lockdown, what are my common goods? And technology can actually use multiple machine learning coupled with AI to actually improve my replenishment, meaning I can get my suppliers to deliver the products, the right products to the customers on a continuous basis, making sure that my customers always get the products on a continuous basis. We have another question on the impact of COVID-19 and how can we leverage the use of technology without being compromised by hackers? So technology inherently, given most of the technology that we spoke about, I inherently consumed or facilitated over the use of the internet. We as organizations need to put in strong security controls and also create the awareness amongst our employees and consumers about the risk of using technology. These include awareness on my digital profiles, security in making sure my smart devices and my mobile applications are securely configured, have required antivirus software, and also in our organizations, regular security assessments coupled with multiple assurance or combined assurance providers to make sure that our security environment is well managed. Another question that came up is on how do we ensure the privacy of customers when using these technologies, especially around tracking customer behavior. So many of the technologies that are used, some are cloud used, cloud based, some of them are in-house and we as organizations need to have specific agreements or notifications to customers, customers to notify them that we use customer data for internal use only. We need to take the right measures in place to making sure that the systems that we are using to analyze the customer behavior is adequately secure. So for those of you who would like a copy of the presentation, um, it will be circulated to the members and we are going to close the poll now and thank you once again for joining us for the first isaka essay webinar ladies and gentlemen thank you and be safe